Um, thank you all for staying. Uh, this is a little different presentation than you've been having, no PowerPoint. Um, the reason I'm here is that six years ago when I was teaching in the writing and rhetoric program here at URI, for some reason one of my classes um, was uh, scheduled to meet in Bliss Hall right after uh, Professor Lee's class. And, um, well, I'll just say this. It, my class was often delayed a few minutes because Professor Lee's students wanted to talk to him so much afterwards. So uh, we got to know each other a little bit. And uh, I'm going to be reading my comments. I work in the financial services industry. So everything I say publicly has to be approved uh, to make sure I don't say anything misleading. Okay. When my father, Philip Sermon, passed away 10 years ago, I was the executor and residual beneficiary of his estate. I dutifully distributed all the bequests according to his written and oral wishes. As far as how I invested some of the money he left me, well, that's a different story. I took a portion of the funds and located a financial advisor who rather begrudgingly found a management team that would place my money in socially responsible investments. What this meant for me was no investments in fossil fuel, alcohol, tobacco, or military. Now I manage these funds myself. During the bull market from 2009 to 2014, my investments rose considerably, and I was and am proud of them. My father, who passed on to me the excitement of investing, would not have agreed with my choices. Because of loyalty to him, it took me seven years to sell his favorite mutual fund. I sold it because a large part of its holdings we're in an oil company with a terrible environmental record. Recently, I became aware of a split between the way I am investing and the way I'm living. For the first time, I spent a week on a relative's property in New Zealand that is entirely off the grid. Their energy comes from solar panels on the roof and, a hydropower, and hydropower from a creek on their property. I was in heaven until my sister-in-law said to me, I hope it's not a problem if you don't use your hair dryer. And I had never thought about how much electricity my hair dryer uses. Shortly after I used, uh, I learned that I would not even be able to use my ice pack that I put on my hip after hiking uh, because there was no freezer. Anyway, after our two sons were raised, I began teaching, and then I went to graduate school and obtained a doctorate in English when I was 51. I taught literature and writing courses for 20 years at several universities, including URI. I was here for four years. And then in February of 2014, an annual inventory of my investments showed that in the bull market, my socially responsible portfolio had done better than one of the major stock indices of performance in the U.S. Friends suggested I change careers and become a financial representative, and that is just what I've done. I have several clients today who are like-minded. I have helped them to see where their money is invested and that these investments may not be in line with their values. Many have moved some of these investments. We also work together on what I like to call personally responsible decisions related to retirement planning, including life insurance annuities and long-term care insurance. These vehicles are a tax-efficient way to protect and transfer our estates to our spouses, children, and grandchildren. In the early era of socially responsible investing, many of us thought only of the impact of our investments and not our returns. In fact, I distinctly recall having a discussion with one daughter-in-law who helped me make some decisions regarding my inheritance. We agreed passionately with the statement, I don't even care if I make no money. Investing in alternative energy is just the right thing to do. While I am still somewhat of an emotional investor, I now believe it is entirely possible to do the right thing and earn money. Based on a careful economic study of a dozen companies, three financial analysts conclude Quote, a first generation of private impacting investing funds has delivered on the promise of concurrently delivering financial returns and explicit social outcomes. To that end, I am delighted to be working with and have the opportunity to introduce you to my colleague at Independence Financial Partners, Al Completo, who's head of our investment research department. The application of the team's knowledge of how to evaluate companies, portfolio managers, and performance is what balances the recommendations I make to my clients to make it more likely that social outcomes and returns are in sync. So, Thank yeah. you, Karen. Here's the mic.
want to apologize in advance for the hoarse voice. It was a nice uh, Patriots game last night that I was at, and it got pretty crazy. So I do want to appreciate Dr. Lee for inviting us here today. And Karen and I are both really humbled uh, to be speaking in front of just a group of just some smart individuals uh, that are really working hard on solving some pretty important problems. So uh, just by way of introduction for us a little more formally, IFP has been around for about 100 years. Uh, helping individuals like yourself solve some of their problems so that uh, while you guys are working on societal problems, helping things become more sustainable in that way, we want to make sure that there's someone helping you guys and making your personal finances a little more sustainable. So that's really important to us and that's where we're coming from. So again, as Karen mentioned, my name is Al Completo. I'm the director of the investment research department at the firm. And my main job is to help our advisors design different strategies uh, to take into account what's happening in global capital markets and fuse them into what they're doing today in an actual application through their portfolio. So the topic today is sustainable investing. And um, sustainability, by definition, is the endurance of systems and processes. And I think if you break that down to a more granular level, uh, the endurance component can really only be achieved through an ongoing commitment by a whole lot of people, uh, government, universities, people like ourselves. So like Bill Belichick would say, everyone's got to do their job. And our job is to watch the finance aspect because we know that roads and bridges don't fix themselves, uh, but they certainly don't pay for themselves either. So we have to devise different ways to come up with funding mechanisms for that. So our goal today is just to educate you guys a little about how your hard-earned money uh, can be invested in a way that actually helps fund some of the initiatives that you guys are currently paying attention to and studying and really working really hard at. So some people call it SRI, socially responsible investing. Uh, other people call it faith-based investing. And I just think it's another form of sustainable investing because to have sustainable investing, you need to be putting your money where your heart is. And it's a great way to stay engaged and committed if you know that your assets are being placed in things that are funding the causes that you're spending a lot of time, uh, a lot of your personal time and, and your professional time on. So. There's a lot of ideas to have. I'm just going to give you a couple uh, today because I know we're kind of short on time and uh, there's probably much more meaningful presentations here that you guys can get to. So just a quick primer on capital markets to speak broadly. Uh, there's two types of investments. You have equity investments, which everyone knows are stocks, and you have uh, debt investments, which everyone knows is bonds. So when you buy a stock, you're actually buying ownership in a company, and you are explicitly aligning your interests with the interests of that particular company. If you are buying a share of Apple, you are explicitly betting that Apple's fortunes will help make you wealthier over the long period of time. When you buy a bond, you are actually serving as a lender to whoever issued you that bond. Uh, so you're also aligning your interests, be it in a different way, uh, to whatever they're trying to fund, to whatever things they're trying to make happen with that particular capital. So. When you understand how capital markets work, um, you start realizing that it isn't just buying these three or four letter uh, ticker symbols that may go up and down and you're hoping you're buying it low and selling it high. You're actually investing in these companies. You're actually investing in what they do. And uh, the beautiful thing about investing is that you can decide where your capital goes. If you don't want to invest in fossil fuels like Karen has made the choice, you don't have to. You can find other things, uh, that other companies that are taking advantage of some of the uh, pretty significant trends happening in renewable energy. So if you're passionate about improving infrastructure and roads and bridges uh, on a local level, you can invest in things like Rhode Island municipal bonds that not only pay you uh, interest that's tax-free um, for both the state and federal level, they're also being used to fund those bridges, fund that construction, fund those hospitals, fund those schools. Uh, so you're actually aligning yourself not for a uh, just a, a monetary gain from the capitalist side, uh, it's also you're getting a, a, a residual societal gain, if you will, as well from your investment. So just two ideas that we could have for you guys to consider today, and we hope that if you have any questions, you might come to us afterwards for a more thorough explanation. Uh, but first, again, on the municipal bonds, a lot of people have heard of them. Uh, they offer tax-exempt interest for higher-earning individuals. This can lead to some really pretty uh, substantial tax savings, uh, especially compared to taxable bonds, which the majority of the people tend to hold in their, in their normal portfolios. Um, 
They're very, very attractive right now on a relative basis. If you look at where spreads are to get a little technical, um, they're about as wide as they've been in quite some time. And just them going and reverting to their mean, we expect some decent capital appreciation from the municipal bond side. And again, the, uh, if you're a high net worth earner, uh, you have the residual benefit of having a tax equivalent yield. So where yield might be 3% on a municipal bond, your tax equivalent yield on the highest bracket might be closer to five, uh, which is pretty attractive in a world of low rates right now. And another idea we have to consider, which is on uh, the re renewable energy front, is uh, this funding mechanism that we refer to as yield codes. Uh, which is how some of these renewable energy companies are helping to fund themselves. So just to give you a little primer on that, uh, in terms of the renewable space and specifically solar, uh, because solar, because some of its uh, attractive uh, weather-related uh, benefits, it doesn't have, it's not as sensitive to, 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 to different weather patterns, uh, it tends to be at the forefront of the renewable energy movement. So just to give you a few statistics in terms of the growth in this particular sector, solar demand is expected to grow about 14.5% annually between now and 2020. Uh, since 2005, uh, photovoltaic price per watt has dropped from about $8 per watt to below $3 per watt, uh, which has a direct relationship with a significant increase in PV installations that we've seen over that particular time. Uh, despite the solid growth, solar currently only accounts for 1.2% of electricity generation worldwide. And in the U.S., 29 states have enacted government programs known as renewable portfolio standards that mandate that electric utilities purchase a certain amount from renewable energy sources. So this isn't a trend that's going away. This isn't a fad type of investment. This is happening. The truth about uh, pulling up a lot of fossil fuel from the world is that it's, it's damaging to the climate. It's damaging to, 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 to what's going on on Earth. So different solutions need to happen. And there's other places in the world that are taking much more advantage of renewable energies uh, than we are. Uh, we have a lot of political gridlock that seems to kind of stymie the process, uh, but it is moving forward. And like Karen referred to, we're at that inflection point where no longer do you have to just put up with uh, abysmal returns to try to align your investments with how you believe. There's actually some growth going on here, and our job is to try to help you guys find it and, and, and find the, the, the right ways to gain those exposures. So just to speak on what a yield co is, essentially these big companies, these renewable energy energy companies, very capital intensive. It costs First Solar a lot of money to build out a solar farm. That makes it very difficult for them to have money for the next project. So what they essentially do is they take these big solar farm assets, they long-term contract them to a utility, uh, and they collect those cash flows, and they almost spill, uh, split that out as like a separate entity that's available for you and I to purchase, sorry. And those spit out a consistent yield of five to 6% that again are backed by long-term 17 to 20 year contracted assets. A company like First Solar will then use that fresh capital to invest in new projects. And uh, it's a little mechanism that it has only been around for a couple of years, but it's really important for this particular industry uh, because money is the problem, just like with any other industry. And they had to find a way to continue fueling this growth. So those are just two ideas we wanted to leave you guys with. Uh, again, there's plenty more depending on uh, where you're faith-based investing or what you're working on or how to align your interest of what you work on in day-to-day -day to your investments. And if you did have any questions, feel free to see Karen or I, and we'd be happy to kind of disseminate that a bit for you. Thank you guys for having us.